reaction to Deuteronomy chapters 7 through 9, and really also in yesterday's reading on the three previous chapters, as we're looking at Moses's kind of farewell advice to the people of Israel. And what kind of struck me, and I'd never thought about this before, is uh, according to the scriptures, Moses is about 120 years old here. And the only people who would be older than about 40 uh, that we know of were Joshua and Caleb, who are mentioned here as figures. Everybody else is, is 40 and below. So it's this, this huge gap and this aged uh, leader and this sage sharing advice. And what's, what's really struck me is in these first chapters, and I never really noticed it before, is Moses keeps saying, remember, remember. Remember, and he's reminding them of, of God's goodness and also um, the mistakes of God's chosen people. He's saying, remember these things, remember these things. And so I was reflecting on this um, and to the story so far, I think sometimes we get into scripture and we treat it um, almost like a little little lines of, of teaching that we need to abide by and we miss the story. But the story so far, it's remembering uh, what God has done and how he took a, a world in chaos and darkness and created life and peace and harmony. And then how, how when humans chose their own way, um, chose to be masters, that chaos and darkness returned. And we see that in the flood. We see that in the, in the judgment on Egypt, right? The, the darkness and the chaos. But God continuing to be faithful um, in spite of this. And in these chapters... <laughs> Uh, Moses says, God didn't choose you because you were special, but he kept his promise, right? And we go all the way back and the promise, the first pages of the Bible was that a descendant of the woman, right? A descendant of Eve who, who was the, the forerunner of disconnection from God, that descendant would bless the whole world. And, and this is being fulfilled. Um, and so just a powerful thing that's being reminded of here and, and that we have so much to remember and we remember the story and remember the, the, the consistency of God and the story and his actions and the inconsistency of us as humans. Another thing that was, uh, has always been striking to me in these chapters is Moses is saying, listen, God is going to deliver you and fulfill this promise, right? Not only the promise of salvation that's ultimately coming um, through the people of Abraham, but the promise that he made to Abraham to give his descendants this certain land, this area. And he says, there's all these nations who are more powerful, more numerous than you. But God's going to work and drive them out. Just like he worked for you in Egypt, right? A more powerful nation. He's going to fight that battle for you. But he says, he's not going to do it all at once. He says, he's going to do it slowly so that all the people aren't gone. And then wild animals come in and take over the land. It's just such a like a, a detail that's... It's so powerful to me is that God, hey, he's going to work it incrementally so you can just kind of move in. Um, and I, I don't, God's making it um, smooth. And that's the desire I believe he has for us. And when we, when we read scripture and we look at the story that leads to Jesus, um, God is guiding us on a, on a smooth journey. Um, doesn't mean there won't be hardships, but it means that God is working with us. So um, thankful for these readings, thankful for scripture. I hope that you're carrying along um, and, and, and looking here, I hope you're enjoying the Psalms as well. Um, we're not talking about them as much, but maybe be blessed and, uh, continue to absorb the story of scripture that leads to Jesus.